You know, sometimes in our marriage <laughs> and, and even in other relationships, we find ourselves in situations where we need to assess the situation so that we can know how to respond. We, we know the proper way to um, bring about a transformation or change into the situation. A lot of times this is the point that trips a lot of couples up. Um, they, they, they're not sure how to assess the situation. So we read things into them and we, we begin to let our imagination run wild. And yet, assessing situations is really not as complicated as we might think. There are four things I want to mention to you that I, I think are so obvious, and yet they're so overlooked at times when it comes to uh, having a marriage issue, a, maybe a crisis of some point, a conflict of some type, and assessing that situation so that we can move the relationship forward and find the connection that we really want in our marriage. So the first step is this, ask. It's so um, it's such one of those duh moments, and yet it's something that we, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't really do. We do, we don't ask. We don't ask about what's going on in in their world. We don't ask about how they're feeling about a situation or what their perspective is. We assume a lot, but we don't ask. And yet it's kind of like Occam's razor. Occam's razor is a principle that says the um, the simplest solution is usually the best one. And uh, when it comes to really finding out what's going on in your partner, ask. Just ask. What's going on with you? Not in a defensive way. This is where we miss it a lot of times. When we do apply it, we come across like, you know, what's up your crawl? And that's not the attitude we got to have. But to genuinely and authentically desire to know. And listen, we, we know when it's authentic. To, to authentically know what's happening in your world right now. Tell, tell me what's going on. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you think. And the second one is similar, <laughs> is that we, we need to listen. We're so bent as human beings to get our point across and to make sure that we're heard, that we stop listening and stop hearing. And I, I think one of the most undervalued um, principles of connecting in marriage is that of learning to hear and learning to listen and practicing that so that you can really absorb what's going on in their world. It's really the, the basis, the basis of empathy. When we empathize with someone, we're able to enter into their world. We can only do that if we're listening. The third one is this, um, pay attention to the signs, read the signs. Body language says a lot. Sometimes our spouse may have a difficulty saying what's on their heart. Sometimes that's because maybe fear of rejection. A lot of times it's because we, we just simply don't know how to articulate it yet. And so we need to be astute at paying attention to the signs. Now, it's important here to don't, don't misinterpret the signs, but pay attention to them. And if, you're, if your partner's pulling away, realize this is an indication something's wrong. If your partner is not talking as much as they used to, and everybody's got their own dynamic and their own rhythm and dance to life, but if, if that's changed and shifted, um, pay attention to that. And then go back to number one and number two. But pay attention to the signs and watch to see. You know, when we really care about something, I find that we, we really do, we seek to pay attention when, we, when we're genuine and authentic about it. And so this principle simply says the third one is, is just pay attention to the signs. Be observant to what's going on. And, and the final one is this. And I guess everything kind of culminates in it is you got to be open. You know, we, we have this innate sense, kind of a sixth sense, that we know when someone is open to a conversation with us. And to the degree that we feel that they're open and they're not going to judge us and they're not going to criticize us, they're not going to condemn us, they're not going to uh, feel bad about us, that we, they're not going to reject us. To the degree that we sense that, we can be open with them and talk about what's really happening in our world and in our life. 
if we feel like we're going to be criticized, if we feel like we're not going to be heard, we all tend to close down. And that comes back to number three, pay attention to those signs. Are you doing something that gives the vibe that for some reason in there, they think you're not going to be open to them? So all of these four things come together to, to really ask and listen and to pay attention to the signs and evaluate your own life. What am I, what, not only the signs of your spouse, but what's, what am I giving across here? And then finally, to really be open enough to go, is there something where we're disconnecting and what can we do to, to heal that? I think if you just put these four basic principles into place, you find yourself moving forward. It, it's not a fix-all, certainly not a cure-all, but it's better than the opposite of these things. <laughs> that We have to open ourselves up to our partner in order to move forward in our relationship. I, I hope this helps you cross the bridge into some wholeness and the connection that you desire in your relationship.